When it comes to picking the hardest hits, you have to lay down the law. Newton's Law. Sir Isaac's second law says that force equals mass times acceleration. Which is a mathy way of saying that when it comes to a hit, size and speed both matter. The question is, would you rather be hit by a big thing moving slowly or a little thing moving quickly? We'll start with a big thing moving slowly. Enter Sumo. These guys are American sumo wrestlers. Their combined weight, almost 700 pounds of pure mass. Yep, that's big. They started only 28 inches apart. Not a whole lot of space to get your mass moving. Dr. Cindy Burr of Wayne State University heads up our science team, which will tackle this massive question. So in our efforts to try to measure how much force a sumo wrestler actually imparts upon impact, we actually put an accelerometer on their waist. They're not moving fast, but the mass is enormous. Coming together at just over one and a half miles per hour, this 700 pound collision generates 1,000 pounds of force. That's like having an entire pyramid of cheerleaders jump on your chest. Trust us, it's not as fun as it sounds. Okay, big things moving slowly, got it. Now let's reverse the variables in the equation. What happens when the mass is small, but the acceleration is really fast? Pay attention. The answer is about to smack you right in the face. This is Quentin Rampage Jackson, world champion light heavyweight MMA fighter. He may not have the size of a sumo wrestler, but what he lacks in mass, his fist makes up in acceleration. Nobody on this planet punch harder than me. Rampage Jackson, What's thank up, you so much for coming in. Yeah. So what we're going to do is have you hit an instrumented heavy bag that sensors inside, and we're going to find out exactly how hard you punch. How do you punch so hard? Me? How, you. how I punch so hard? Yeah. Put my ass in there. What I'm doing is I'm getting my ass behind it, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm bringing everything with all my weight. I just lunge it. <laughs> Excuse me for flinching. It's okay, babe. Rampage cocks his fist back and goes, I'm gonna flinch every time. <laughs> this is in his eyes. <laughs> Our heavy bag, used by the USA boxing team, is outfitted with special pressure sensors that will allow us, for the first time ever, to measure the power of Rampage's punch. How will the mass of Rampage's flying fist stack up to the classic art of sumo? You ready? Oh. <laughs> the impact is staggering. Nate, what were we seeing on that? Can you, can you feel him staring at you? I can. <laughs> yeah, that uh, there's definitely um, some data there. Our cutting edge motion capture technology from Vicon House and Moves takes us inside this punishing punch. There's a reason why Rampage Jackson wins over half his fights by knockout. A punch isn't about mass. The fist weighs little more than the brain itself, but he generates massive velocity. Enough to deliver 1,800 pounds of force and cause his opponent's brain to recoil back and forth in the skull. Kind of like having a teenage hippo sit on your head. Once again, not as fun as it sounds. 
But the fist is really the end of the story. Rampage's power starts in the ground. It's called kinetic linking. The energy starts in his feet, drives up through his legs, hips, and into the massive ripped muscles of his torso, core, and gluteus maximus. An energy chain about to explode through his fist. The biggest link in the chain? The biggest muscle. That's right, the gluteus maximus. Or put another way, put my ass in. Now that's a man who knows his science. Bottom line, the power that surges through Rampage's gluteus maximus and into his fist is almost double the sumo's impressive impact. Simply put, the small objects moving fast knock the crap out of the big objects moving slowly. To quote our good friend Sir Isaac Newton, Wham, bam, thank you, Rampage. <laughs> Coming up, we know elite basketball players can jump, but what can they jump over? Find out when Sports Science returns in a heartbeat. When analyzing the highest flyers in sports, you've got to start with basketball. Are these guys supermen? Can they fly? Leap tall buildings in a single bound? Uh, no. But that made us wonder, what can these supermen jump over? find out what the highest flyers in basketball can really leap in a single bound, we brought in the best street baller on the planet, Skywalker. Chris Skywalker Lowry is a New York City baller and slam dunk champion whose nickname reflects his astonishing vertical leap. The average athlete, like sports science team leader John Brunkus, has a vertical leap of 24 inches. Elite pro ballers have a vertical leap in the low to mid 40s. Skywalker's vertical leap, a mind blowing 50 inches. This is what a 50 inch vertical leap looks like. So, how does he do it? What forces are at play to launch a human 50 inches above the Earth? We have the questions. Our scientists have the technology to get the answers. This is the TechScan F-Scan system. And this is a sensor that's designed to measure pressures and forces inside the shoes. And each sensor has over 900 sensing elements that can measure pressures at over 500 samples per second. I took a lot of math classes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really incredible. To put Skywalker's 50-inch vertical leap to the test, we had to raise the bar. So we set the bar at 5 feet 8 inches. Okay, so you're going to climb and you're going to jump clear over I'm you not know, nervous. I am not nervous. I am going to stare straight forward. I have full confidence that you're going to clear me. I have absolutely no confidence in what's going to happen. Get up. Get up. The data from our sensors is astonishing. Here's the run-up, and this is where Skywalker actually takes off. You've got a big peak here at around 9 Gs. So 9 G minus 1 G, we're looking at about 8 Gs above Earth's gravity. Put another way, Skywalker generates 1,400 pounds of force. That's enough force to get off the ground with the entire starting lineup of the Detroit Pistons on his back. Granted, he couldn't get much air, but for a nanosecond, he could get off the floor. 
Okay, so Skywalker can leapfrog a human. But we wanted to see what else a guy with a 50-inch vertical leap could jump. We had to push Skywalker to his limit. So we rolled in a bigger obstacle to park in the paint. When we're lining up the car, we're all kind of looking at this saying, there is no way he's going to jump over this. What are you going to do? You're taking off from right where? Taking off from right here. And I'm going to finish. Skywalker wasn't expecting such an extreme test when he entered our lab. Now he has to step his game up. Way up.